In my last video, I talked about a ball python enclosure setup, and now I will be diving more into depth about the substrates. For ball pythons, there are good substrates, bad substrates, and substrates that are debated whether you should use them or not. I'll be talking about all of these for the next few minutes, so listen up. Let's start with the good stuff. A good substrate for a ball python will have a high humidity level, it will maintain humidity well, since a ball python requires humidity of in between 50 and 60 percent. It will also have a low impaction risk. Impaction happens when your ball python accidentally swallows some of its substrate, which then clogs up their digestive system and causes problems. You want your substrate to be good for burrowing. Some individual ball pythons enjoy burrowing more than others. Mine doesn't really enjoy burrowing, but it does dig around in the substrate a little bit, and a loose substrate is more comfortable for your ball python. You want your substrate to look natural, or at least I do. I enjoy natural looking substrates. You also want your substrate to be easy to clean, a low risk of mites and fungus growth, and a good price, unless you want it to be expensive which I definitely don't. I have a strict budget. You want your substrate to be easy to get and very available also. So it's that would mean it is common at maybe hardware stores or especially pet stores nearby so you can easily get it if you run out or need to change it. The first substrate I'm going to be talking about is Zoomed Reptile Bark, Zilla Jungle Mix, and other pet brand things that are similar to that. These are good because they keep the humidity levels up and they look somewhat natural. They are more expensive though, so if you have enough money you can get them, but I would not normally recommend it because you can get stuff that's pretty much just as good for much cheaper. It also has a risk of mold, and if it does mold you have to replace it, and since it's expensive it might cost a lot of money eventually. This substrate also has an impaction risk. Pretty much all loose substrates have impaction risk, but this one is a little bit on the higher end. Substrate number three for ball pythons would be coconut fiber, or eco-earth. I did not list these things in order from like best to worst, but I think this is probably my favorite. It maintains humidity really well, it absorbs and breaks down odors, it has a low impaction risk if used alone, but of course it's still a possibility like with any other loose substrate. It's great for your ball python to burrow in, it looks really natural, it's easy to clean, but it can be hard to see feces because of the darker color of the coconut fiber. It, there, is, there is a slight chance of mold. If it does mold, you can just replace, and it's actually a decent price, especially if bought in compact bricks. So it's even it's cheap to replace also. I have a 55 gallon, and I can fill the whole thing with like, two inches full for like ten maybe fifteen dollars and I hardly ever need to do that I only need to do that every once in a while as long as I spot clean the feces it is re readily available at pretty much all nearby pet stores and online so it's really easy to find the fourth substrate I'll be talking about for ball pythons is cypress mulch or forest floor is the pet brand it's excellent at retaining moisture, it absorbs odors, it does have a higher impaction risk because of big and sharp chunks and pieces, so when you're putting this substrate into your tank, you want to try to remove these, and when you're feeding your ball python, you definitely want to be very cautious when feeding it over cypress mulch, because if your ball python gets or swallows that cypress mulch, then it is almost guaranteed impaction because of those big chunks and pieces. It is not great for burrowing also because of those big chunks and pieces. It does look natural though. It can be difficult to find feces and to splot clean them because of the big chunks and pieces and because it's a darker color. It does resist mold and fungus growth and it has a low risk of mites so that's really nice. The garden brands are really cheap, otherwise it can be pretty pricey if you're getting the pet brand. I got mine from a local hardware store and it, I got like a huge bag for a super cheap price. So they're available at 
like pretty much all local hardware stores if you want to get in there. Or you can look at pet stores and get Forest Floor or other Cypress Mulch pet brands. When you're getting it from your local hardware store, you want to be careful because it comes with a lot bigger pieces and sharper pieces. But I, I just take these out or try to take as much as I can out or break them apart just to make them less sharp and smaller. Substrate number five for ball pythons is topsoil. Uh, things like reptile soil and other pet brands will work. There's also bioactive forms from some pet brands. And you can also just get it at your local hardware store. That's what I did. You can get it really cheap from your local hardware store, and that's why I did. It maintains humidity really well. It has a low impaction risk if used alone, but of course it's still a possibility. It is great for burrowing, it looks natural, it's easy to clean, it probably won't mold or grow fungus, and if it does, it's cheap to replace. It is a good price, especially if bought at a hardware store. Even the reptile uh, soil and other pet brands can be pretty cheap too. It's easy to find and very available pretty much everywhere that they sell soil because it's topsoil. You can use a mix of any of these substrates because they're all good for ball pythons, so any mixture of them will be okay. I use EcoEarth, Cypress Mulch, and a little bit of Topsoil from Home Depot. I get both the Cypress Mulch and the Topsoil from Home Depot, like I mentioned earlier. And together, it makes a really cheap and really natural looking substrate. And since I have mostly EcoEarth and a little bit of Topsoil, it is good for my ball python to burrow in. He doesn't normally burrow, but he does like to dig in it a little bit, and it's comfortable for him. So I think that mixture is really great, and I really like that. Before I go on to bad substrates, I just got some new glasses. I don't have to wear them all the time, but I probably will end up wearing them a lot. So tell me in the comments if you think I should wear them during videos or not. Ah, oh, you're soaking! Woo. I just took a bath. <laughs> Time to hop in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> so now let's talk about the bad substrates, the one you should definitely not use for ball pythons. I'm not going to mention where to get these because I don't want you getting them. The first is pine and cedar shavings. Definitely do not use these. These are poisonous to all snakes. So they may release harmful oils and compounds to your ball python, which will harm your ball python. Definitely don't use gravel either. These have a huge impaction hazard, they're uncomfortable for your snake, they don't absorb any odors, it doesn't retain any moisture, so there's no reason to use this over any of the other substrates that I mentioned before. Also, don't use sand. Sand reduces humidity, it can grow moldy, it has an impaction hazard, a pretty high one, it's irritating to your ball python, do not use sand. There's also artificial outdoor carpet and turf that you definitely should not use. These also may release poisonous chemical compounds to your ball python. They don't absorb any odors. They start breaking down. They eventually get really difficult to clean. Don't use these. There's no reason either that you should use these over the good substrates that I mentioned earlier. The last bad substrate I'm going to talk about is recycled fiber fluff and pellet products. These greatly reduce humidity. They're bad for burrowing, they have a high impaction risk, and they're not comfortable for your ball python, so don't use these either. When it comes to substrates that are debatable whether they're good or bad for, for ball pythons, I generally stay away from them just because they're not as safe as the ones that you know are good and healthy for your ball python. So I that's kind of just a rule for me. I don't normally get the debated ones. Um, however, I will be talking about two debated substrates if you decide you really want to get them, but both of these I would recommend staying away from. The first is newspaper, paper towel, and reptile carpet. These do not maintain the humidity that is needed for your ball python. Your ball python can't burrow in them. However, they are mildew, mold, fungus resistant, and mites can be easily avoided. They're extremely cheap, even free sometimes. They're super easy to clean, they're available nearly everywhere, has no risk of impaction, but it is not natural looking at all. Um, I actually used 
reptile carpet for the first while that I was keeping my ball python. I did not, I, I, I kind of, I was okay with it at first, but I just did not like it later on. And as soon as I switched to this loose mixture of coconut fiber, cypress mulch, and topsoil, I was so much happier. My ball python was so much happier. It actually made things easier, not harder. So remember, you're getting a substrate for your snake, not you. So just because it's cheap, available, and easy to clean does not mean your snake will like it. Get what's best for you and your snake. The second substrate that I'll be talking about that is debated whether you should use them, whether you should use it or not, is aspen. This does not hold humidity well and it gets moldy. It also has a higher mite risk. It is good for burrowing and it's a good price, a really good price. It's easy to spot clean, however it can be messy. So when you're cleaning it all out, it seems to just float away sometimes in dust and small pieces. It does not absorb much odors at all, so when your ball python defecates, it might smell pretty bad. It is also readily available at supermarkets, pet stores online, and at farm stores. It also does have an impaction hazard, especially if it is in the bigger pieces. When you get the pet brands, it normally comes in finer pieces, so impaction risk isn't as much of a worry. But of course, like with all loose substrates, there is a small impaction risk. The last substrate is snow. This substrate is unheard of, or at least I've never heard of it. If you have, comment down below. Although it is water itself, it does not maintain humidity levels. It is great for burrowing. It does not mold. The temperature will kill all adult mites. It is free if you live in the north during the winter time. It's easy to clean. I don't know if it absorbs odors. It's unheard of, so it's probably in smelt of. It looks natural, especially if you're going for kind of a wintry, snowy look. It's super available, like I said before, if you live up north during the winter time, but it can be extremely hard to get down in the south or during the summer. You can use a freezer for your ball pythons enclosure if necessary. It also has no impaction risk at all, so that is really nice. So it seems like this substrate is perfect for ball pythons. However, all that to say, definitely, definitely don't use this as your substrate. It would be your ball python's last days. So remember, good substrates to use for your ball python include reptile bark, jungle mix, etc., coconut fiber, cypress mulch, topsoil, or a mix of any of these. Bad substrates that you should definitely avoid using include pine and cedar shavings, gravel, sand, artificial outdoor carpet or turf, and recycled fiber fluff and pellet products. Substrates you should probably avoid because they are debated and maybe unsafe include aspen, newspaper, paper towel, and reptile carpet. Choose your substrate wisely according to your time, budget, and preference. But otherwise, that's all I can think of that you guys need to know for ball python substrates. If you want to know how to set, properly set up a ball python enclosure, then this video will show you how to do so. Thanks for watching.